Your sound alternative. This is Tiger Talk on your home for Tiger Athletics, WGRE 91.5 FM. Welcome back to Tiger Talk. Dan Steinbaugh here with Ole Yeager, and we are pleased to be joined for the first time by head football coach Bill Lynch. Coach, thanks for being on. Glad to be with you guys. And you had a tough matchup in the first game, having to travel all the way down to Suwannee, uh, playing a team that had kind of a weird offense. Can you talk about how you tried to prepare for what they were going to give you? Well, it is difficult. And, uh, you know, I, I thought our defensive staff uh, did a great job preparing our defensive team, and they executed very well. If you take away the first drive, uh, we played them pretty well, and, and we forced four turnovers. Normally, if you can force four turnovers, you're going to win the football game. Uh, but I, it is it is a completely different offense. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, the, the triple option, it's the only time we're going to see it this year. Mm. So maybe the fact that it was our first game, we had a chance to get a little bit of a head start during camp on it versus if it came like week six or week seven when all, you only had three or four days to get ready for it. And you mentioned that's the only time you're going to see it this entire season. You've got a completely different attack coming up right. in Wittenberg. What have you changed in practice to try to adjust from – one scheme to another. Well, you know, really, we're kind of going back to our base scheme. Uh, what we did against uh, Sewanee was a, it was it was a triple option defense, and so not necessarily what we're going to play the rest of the year. And and uh, Wittenberg does run a lot of the same formations that we run offensively, so it it kind of goes back to what our defense had to prepare for throughout uh, preseason camp. So uh, obviously, they're not the same exactly the same as what we do offensively, much more so than the triple option. So we'll kind of get back to the base things that uh, we put in from day one. Talking about uh, what you guys are running offensively and who you've got in the mix, uh, quarterback right now is Justin Murray. Mm -hmm. He's just a sophomore. He's got a lot of talent. Is there going to be any chance that we see Drew Seaman or another quarterback, or is this kind of Justin's offense uh, to try to lead forward? No, we're, we're constantly evolving. Uh, Justin's certainly the starter, and uh, but... Uh, you know, we we uh, we have some other good quarterbacks. You mentioned Drew Seaman, and, and we've got a couple young freshmen that we think are very good uh, football players as well. So, um, you know, you, you can't give everybody equal reps in practice. You got to get the first guy ready, but but the other guys uh, are ready to go, and uh, we'll see how um, it works out. But I, I I'll say this: I thought Justin, for the most part, played well in, in the opener. You know, like to have a couple throws back, a couple mm, of those turnovers. Yeah. But uh, and that's you know, from an offensive standpoint, we just didn't finish drives. We had first downs and, and uh, uh, you know we, we had some success both through the air and on the ground but we didn't finish any drives and, and three times you know when you turn it over and don't have a chance to uh, you know score points that that uh, came back to bite especially since our defense was able to uh, create four turnovers and, and we didn't really capitalize on it. And offensively I'm noticing a lot of the same names um, as kind of the guys who are playing at least the skill positions with the exception of Barry Flynn um, from last year's squad, how much did you try to keep the same, or were you just trying to reevaluate everyone? And those guys just happened to be, you know, the best at their positions. Yeah, we we reevaluated. I, obviously, uh, from an offensive standpoint, it's good that Brett Dietz is back, and Brett was a quarterback receiver coach a year ago, and worked closely with the quarterbacks. Uh, uh, you know, you mentioned Justin and Drew, uh, and and certainly the wide receivers. So. Uh, you know, we had a good feel f through Brett and obviously watching tape from, you know, the season ago. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of depth at wide receiver. Uh, you mentioned Barry's new to the scene. But other than that, there were a lot of guys that played throughout last season. So we do have a lot of depth at that position. Looking forward to uh, this week against Wittenberg. You're playing a, a really fast, aggressive team uh, with backfield leaders uh, on the defensive side. Spencer Lino, Victor Banjo, Ryan Myers, guys who just fly around and they're really quick. Uh, what are some of the keys to slowing down that fast-paced Wittenberg team? Well, you know, it, it, it is different than what we what we played. Our, our defense has to, you know, get lined up and, and uh, you know, be sound in what we do. And, and uh, they've got good balance offensively, uh, running and passing. Defensively, I, 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 they, they're, uh, they're very physical up front, bigger than we are, uh, bigger than Suwannee. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge for us is matching up uh, – Got big linebackers that run well, uh, so that that'll be different. And then their secondary, I think, is uh, pretty aggressive. Uh, you know, they they'll play some bump and run coverage, and they'll get in your face. And Sewanee didn't do that. So, you know, there's some things that we're going to see Saturday that we didn't see in the opener, and we certainly have tried to you know get our guys ready for it through the week of practice. But uh, you know, it'll it's always different on game day. So uh, we'll just have to see how we react to it. 
Coach, you've been struggling a little bit, I think, in the defensive secondary with some injuries, mm-hmm. um, trying to plug some guys in. What do you think your secondary situation is right now, and are you happy with the players that you're able to put out there? Well, we're happy with the guys we have. We just don't have enough depth. I, I think that's the biggest thing, uh, both at corner and uh, in, in, at safety. Uh, we don't have the depth that we have to develop and, and the experience uh, you know, that, uh, that you'd like to have. Dennis Calicut's you know, played a lot. Uh, uh, but Lance Sansone, I think, has played well. Ham Hooper, who's just a sophomore, I think he's shown himself well in practice. Didn't get to play, uh, you know, much uh, in the opener. Uh, at safety, you know, Paul Simon getting hurt. That, you know, that was a little bit of a blow because Paul's a great athlete, not only uh, as a safety, but certainly as a punter. Um, but, you know, I, I think Fulta, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you you know he's a sophomore, but at least he was in the program last year, and I uh, thought he played well. And then and then Cody Baker, our freshman, I, I think for a freshman he certainly uh, handled himself well in that first game, and I think he's a talented young guy. So we we just we, we're continually trying to develop the depth both at safety and at corner. Okay, so, go ahead um, for for the rushing game uh, last week only about 88 yards recorded rushing. Um, uh, what, are, what what things can we expect to see that are, are going to be an improvement for the running game this week against a tough run defense? Well, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult, but we, we've, uh, you know, we, we can't shy away from running the football. And, and, you know, in all honesty, looking back, I wish we would have run the ball more times last week. You know, I think at, at times we got maybe a little uh, stuck on the pass, thinking that we could make some plays uh, with the defense they were playing us. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, really in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, we kind of controlled the ball and controlled the situation, and it's those times you want to finish the team off with a run, and we didn't do that, so that one's on me. Um, but you know, we're gonna we just got to keep going with what we're doing. Um, I, I think our offensive line is getting better, and and you see improvement in the, in the off week, and uh, we we got you know we have to be fortunate to keep them healthy so that uh, uh, we keep moving forward with it, and and also. You know, we've got a, a group of backs, and, and uh, we'll be rotating them. And, and uh, But I think that the, the biggest thing we didn't get in the run game that we have to, we've got to get a few big runs. You know, we, we didn't, you know, at some point, three- and four-yard uh, runs are important to the offense, but you got to get some explosive runs as well. And, and really, we need to get some explosive passes. That was probably the disappointing thing from last week as well, is that we didn't get any big plays that could kind of change the field position. So, Coach, how do you try to – cultivate you know those those big plays is it just a mentality or is it you know actual schemes that you're trying to do a little to- both you know you, you know at some point you just got to keep you, you keep going with what you do if you constantly try to create big plays or trick plays then you don't get any better at the, at the basics um but you know getting the right people in on the right situations and at some point you know a running back making a guy miss or breaking a tackle and a uh, receiver making a catch and a run after the catch uh, all those are, you know, different things that uh, you're looking for in order to, uh, to get some explosive plays. But because it's it's very very difficult to drive the ball uh, on a, on a football team, a college football team nowadays. Uh, and the same thing though, why our defense played well against Sewanee, because other than the one big play that they had, you know, early on the first drive, we really did a good job of of keeping them from. Uh, very few big plays, and sometimes you know triple option is an explosive type. You know, can create some of those. So, uh, you know, we're we're certainly not panicked about it. We played one football game, but I do think as we go through the year, we've got to we've got to create some more of those big plays. And Justin Murray was he had 15 carries for 37 yards right. in that last game. Uh, 15 was by far the most of any of the rushers. Is that something that's going to continue going forward, or was that just you know one game that's happened to be the case? I think each week's going to be different based on what the defense plays. Um, we thought there there were some things uh, that we saw that the way Suwani played that we felt like uh, he could carry the football. Some of them were not design runs, but they were runs off passes that um, count in the rushing total. But uh, you know that's that's a, a strength of, of Justin that we feel like he's uh, uh, you know can be a a good ball carrier, and so that will be a part of our package. But it'll change week to week. Um, kind of speaking on mentality, uh, last year's uh, loss to Wittenberg was a little bit dismal, but I think as everyone uh, can see, this is a different team, this DePaul team this year, a lot more confident and a lot more technical. Um, what kind of uh, mentality do the players have that um, from the team last year going into this Well, week? you know, it, it, that's very hard for me to compare since I wasn't here. Um, I, we have great respect for Wittenberg and going over to Wittenberg, you know, and playing a night game. That, that's a difficult setting. 
Um, but I, I, I think I like our mindset. I like the way we've practiced. Uh, I do think we're developing some confidence. Um, we have a lot of competition at key spots, so that's made practice lively. Um, you know, now we've, you know, we've kind of, kind of, here we are Wednesday evening. We've got to clean some things up on Thursday, and after that, it's it's a mental game. You know, you, you rest the body and get yourself mentally ready to play. And at one o'clock on Saturday, we got to let it loose. But it should be a great atmosphere. You know, playing our first home game, and things are different out of Blackstock now, and with the new turf. But uh, uh, you know, really everything is. You guys know when you're out there, it just looks so different, and it's amazing what it's going to be. You know, six months from now. So I think we'll have a good crowd. I think people will come, want to see it for the first time. So, and uh, Wittenberg will bring a crowd because they've got one of those programs with good traditions. So, uh, they're they're they're. Uh, Fans and uh, certainly families will follow them, so it should be a great atmosphere on Saturday. And as you mentioned, Saturday, the first home game, it's also parents' weekend here, so it should be a pretty big atmosphere for DePaul. I think a little bit smaller atmosphere than you're used to maybe in your past, but <laughs> I think well, it should be exciting. I, it'll be exciting. And let, let me tell you something. You know, I, I've had the opportunity to, to coach at that level, but at 1 o'clock kickoff, uh, the excitement is the same no matter where you're at, no matter how many people are in the stands. And it means just as much to our guys on Saturday as it does in all those BCS stadiums around the country. And having lived that, I, I know that. And I know our guys work just as hard and prepare just as hard, and they're just as anxious for Saturday to get here. What do you think the level of football is at a, a Division three school like DePaul compared to, you know, a Ball State in Indiana? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's – Size, speed, a little bit. You know, I mean, uh, those guys are the ones that get recruited out of high school are generally a, a little bigger and a little right. faster coming out. And, and then at a Division One facility, um, they have more time with their student athletes um, year-round, you know, where everything's mandatory. Really, it's 365 days a year in the weight room and all those kind of things. So from a physical standpoint, uh, they're going to develop guys a little bit more. You know, we got a little more well-rounded. You know, I mean, you know, uh, their academic endeavors are the top priority and also uh, being involved in other events on campus. Mm -hmm. And football is something they do while they're here. And, and I really enjoy that. And, and the reason I enjoy it so much, that's really my background. You know, I, I grew up and I played, when I played at Butler in the 70s, we were in the same conference with DePaul. So, you know, we were small college. Now, obviously, Butler's kind of risen in heights with the basketball program. But, uh, you know, I grew up in the same kind of environment, and, and uh, I coached in it for uh, 12 years, so I certainly understand it and think it's a great way to, uh, you know, I, I know uh, it, it's such a positive experience for our guys, and they really enjoy playing. Well, Coach, we thank you for coming and staying here with us on 91.5 WGRE. We're going to kick it over to the volleyball game. Um, to see the 9-1 team against Anderson tonight. Uh, Coach Lynch, thanks for having your first interview here on 91.5 WGRE. Well, thanks for having me. And the, we're going to kick it over now to Kyle doing the volleyball game on 91.5 WGRE. Your sound alternative. <laughs> 